Hey folks, Jeff Hirsch here with another quick Lightroom training video. Adobe has just released Lightroom Classic version 12.4, and while it isn't quite as earth-shaking as the new AI noise reduction we got in 12.3, there are still a few things worth talking about. First up, they've added grain controls to the masking system so you can apply grain effects to specific parts of your image. I've masked off a flower to demonstrate this with. In the masking panel, there's a subsection called Effects where you'll find the controls for texture and clarity and dehaze, and right below those three, you now have controls for grain amount, grain size, and grain roughness. One thing I want to note here is just beneath the grain controls, you'll find a small info display that says size and roughness are global settings and shared across all grain tools. What this means in plain English is that if you're applying grain effects both globally and locally, the grain size and grain roughness settings will be the same for both. I don't know if there's a technical reason for this or if it's just to keep the grain structure consistent across the entire image. I'm really not sure. I've already added some grain to this flower in the masking panel and I've made the size and roughness 67 and 84. Now, if I close the masking panel and I go down to the regular global grain adjustments and add any amount of grain to the entire picture, you'll notice that the size and roughness are the same 67 and 84 settings as they were in the masking panel. Next, I want to tell you about something really clever Adobe has added to the curves adjustment. Normally, when you increase contrast in an image, let's say by lowering the curve in the shadow tones, you typically get an increase in saturation as a byproduct of that tonal shift. Now, sometimes that's a good thing, and I know photographers add contrast to their images for just that reason. But there are plenty of situations where it would be nice if we could alter the contrast or tone of an image without impacting the saturation of the colors. With the release of Lightroom 12.4, we now have a refined saturation slider within the curves panel that allows us to control the amount of saturation when we're making contrast and tonal adjustments using the curve. The slider starts all the, all the way to the right at 100, and if you move the slider to the left, you'll decrease the amount of saturation that's being imparted by that curve adjustment. There are a couple of more improvements in the develop module I wanted to mention. First, they've added edit indicators in the color section of the HSL color pane to show which hues have been adjusted. There's a little dot under each hue. That's mostly a cosmetic change, but they also added something much more functional to the HSL and color controls. If you hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows while you move, one of the sliders in the hue, saturation, or luminance controls, you'll see the active hue that you're adjusting isolated in color with all the other hues grayed out. This is extremely helpful in seeing just exactly which colors are going to be affected by your adjustments and in which areas of your photo. This same color isolation display also works if you're using the targeted adjustment tool and you hold down Option or Alt while you scrub with it. You'll see not just an individual hue, but whatever combination of hue makes up the pixels that you're scrubbing with that targeted adjustment tool. And the last new improvement I want to mention in the develop module is the new ability to use both the parametric curve sliders and the point curve settings when you're creating develop presets or you're syncing curve settings between multiple images. Lightroom Classic version 12.4 also includes one small but useful improvement in the book module. There's a new option to align a photo within a cell, left, center, or right, top, middle, or bottom. Honestly, this is a long overdue function, and it's about time they gave us this sort of basic control for placing images within cells. 
Aside from those specific improvements, the latest release contains the usual, a myriad of bug fixes along with added support for newly released cameras and lenses. That's all for now. If you learned anything from this video, let me know by clicking that like button. And feel free to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon if you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video. Every like and subscribe I get helps more photographers like you find my training videos. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you all in the next one.